Christmas now we're going to do some ham. We're going to do this is a ham gammon. It's got different uh, titles. This is what you call uh, hail gammon, which is actually a leg of pork, which has been soaked in potassium nitrate, salt, and water for three days, and then taken out. And this is ham, uh, gammon, all the same. Uh, so what we're going to do, easy ways, of, it's a simple way of cooking it. Uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to make up a little bouillon, uh, the water on boiling. Or alternatively, you can have cold water, immerse it in cold water and bring it to the boil and cook it. But one hint is bring the ham out of your fridge for about 45 minutes before you cook it. Because that way the ham, the temperature has risen in your ham more evenly. So it's when you immerse it in the water, it's going to heat through all at the same time. And you don't get the outside of it overcooked and the inside of it cooked. Where if you start cooking it, it's very chilled in the middle, the bone takes a long time to retain the heat. And so now I'm going to do the, the bouillon. I have some water there. I'm going to have an onion. I'm going to stud it with some cloves. You know, uh, later on, when we're finished cooking it, on, on the next video, we will show you how to glaze it when it's totally cooked. Uh, don't, don't be afraid of uh, putting in a little extra cloves. One of the things I say is that if you put in a few spices and a few things that go with your ham, you don't need salt because there's enough salt in the ham. We we'll put in other little flavorings. We're we'll putting the onion, studded with cloves. Put that in, that will cook away. Putting in two cinnamon sticks, two whole cinnamon sticks into the water. And a little bit of pepper. Just a little bit of cracked pepper into the water. Just to, if you're not a baby, if you're going to have herb stocks, you can add anything you like, you know, whatever you want to do to make up your bouillon. Just let it simmer for a while. Well, that's simmering. I'm going to show you what to do with the ham. The only thing you really have to do with the ham is here. This is the H bone, as it's called. This is the joint of the hip. If you're getting a hip replacement, this is what you're getting. You know, right, but they would go right down to there. So basically, it's what you need to do is just mark it there. But what you should do is actually make sure that if you're at home or somewhere, ask the butcher to pre do it for you because they would have nice sharp knives and they do it in a few seconds for you and save you. But if it's at home and somebody gives you a gammon, ham, this is what you do just right in there. Make sure you have a nice sharp knife. And once again, I say, if you have a good knife, you won't cut yourself. Sharp, only blunt knives cut, cut people because you have to put too much pressure on them. And what happens is this takes you all the way down to the joint of the, nearly out to the edge of the ham. Now, nice and clean as you can get it. That there, it's just ready to go in. What we will do is we'll just immerse this, and when it's fully cooked, there's a little bone here, which will pop up, and we will break this and pull it. If it comes away easy, the ham is cooked. If it doesn't come away, leave it in there until it keeps cooking. That's just your sign that your ham is cooked. Okay, we'll talk to you. Just put this in now. Nice and easy. Carefully done. And have enough liquid to immerse the whole ham. Leave it there 20 minutes to the pound and 20 minutes for the bone. So depending on your weight, you know, this is a 13 pound ham. So that's 260 minutes plus 20 minutes is 280 minutes. So we'll see it in 280 minutes time. Talk to that. Okay, as I said to you, this is the bone. Just twist it, pull it, fully cooked. Once that slips out there, the ham is nice and solid. And here we go. Just all the different I'm going to take off the skin, which we'll is peel off nice and gently. Or if you if you want to take it all the way back to the uh, the meat itself, you can use a knife. But just if you're going to honey roast it like we are, you want to leave some of the fat on. Just take off the skin by pe peeling it back. If you want to get the fat really firm, leave it in the fridge for a couple of hours and get it really hard. The reason we're going to leave the fat on 
is we're going to mark it, score it, put some clothes in it, put some sugar on it, some honey, and most of all, it, what we're going to put on it first after we mark it is put some mustard on it. And the mustard will attract the sugar to stick to the fat. You must put something on the fat or dust it with corn flour. Something, you must put on something that will help get the sugar to stick to the fat. Otherwise, when you bake it in the oven, it will just run off. Okay, back to me in a minute when I get this ready. Some mustard. This is Dijon mustard. Uh, pe some people like an English mustard, a really hot one. Uh, me, I like a nice medium mustard. You can use French mustard if you, or any of the grain mustards. Any mustard you feel that you're comfortable with yourself. So just there we go. Just liberally put it on because you want something that will stay on for the sugar to stay to stick to. Make sure all the fat is covered. Grooves are there so you know where you're going. When it cooks out, you'll get the, the scoring marks come up. Now, all the way around. That's enough mustard for the sugar to stick to. Next thing is what we're going to do before we put the sugar on, we're going to put the cloves in. Again, up to you individually, uh, depending on how many you want to put onto it or how much clove flavour you want. In it, clove is great to help uh, use up in the fat. I have my mustard on. I want sugar now. What I'm using here, I'm using a dark brown soft sugar and I'll tell you why I'm using this rather than demerara because it will stick to the mustard the little pack. The demerara being grainy will just run off. So I'm just using this one to pat it down almost like flour. It'll pat down and over the cloves and as it melts in it will stick to the mustard which in turn will stick to the ham and then some of it will run off onto the tray, you'll see later on, and we will base the, the ham with the caramelized sugar as it comes off. So that's basically here. The, if you put honey on, what happens is the honey runs off, and you would have to put a dusting of corn flour or a light dusting of flour to hold the honey to stop it from completely running off as soon as you get some kind of a coating. Now there we go. Nicely on, well packed with sugar, and soft sugar is great. It holds tight, gives you a nice coating. And here we go. As you notice, I pat with this hand and I lift the sugar with this hand so they don't get cross contamination with the sugar. Okay. Now, what temperature? Oh. This goes into a very hot oven, about 220. Because you want the sugar to burn very quickly, you would do because we're too slow in the oven, it would just melt and all run away. Really hot oven, you want it to caramelize quickly. Silicone paper. This is the same as if you buy a silicone mat, but you can buy the silicone paper. Uh, I know we're doing this all over the world, but here in Dublin we use uh, McDonald's of Queen Street, which is the home of Dick Knives. And so any, any good knife company, if you go to them, they'll get you this, it's actually washable paper. Easy to fold, put it away in your drawer when you're finished with it. And when all the sugar comes off here, it means that your tray is not burnt. You don't have to be scraping it, just wash it off on the paper. This is absolutely perfect for one of the most fabulous things I've ever found, silicone paper. Grace. 
got up to 221, 220 is perfect. So I'm just going to click this over to my oven. A quick entrance into the oven. No hanging about. This is a convection oven, so I would actually lose heat. As you see it drops, but now it'll come straight back up again. And do you want to maintain the 220 all through the cooking process, Chef? All the way through the cooking process, otherwise you're, you're, you want to see the ham is cooked. So all you're really doing is you're really crusting. You know, it's, you know like you put the, a crust on a rack of lamb after it's partially cooked? Same with this here. You just simply put your crust in this here to add extra flavours. You know, the mustard will cook to the ham, sugar will cook to the mustard, and we have it all ready. You see, temperature's come back up, two minutes and all be ready. And there, leave this in here, depending on your oven, about 30 minutes should do it. Take it from here. Cooking says Thank sugar you. comes off, but baking into the fat because the mustard is holding it. Nice, beautiful colour coming up. A few more minutes in the kitchen, we can smell all the sugar burning. So it's time to raise our ham from the oven. Thank you. And we're just going to, we're going to take it off. I'm going to put it onto what you can do. Just get your sugars. See, because it's on the silicone, you can lift it up, get a nice pool of sugar back over it. Soft sugar does this. I believe, love salt, working with soft sugar. Just get a nice syrupy sugar. There we go, more of it. By using the silicone paper, you're not scraping on the tin. You get all the sugar, you're rebasing, putting all your sugar back onto your ham. Young David, who cleans up the trays, will be delighted. <laughs> all right, so there we go. Nicely done. Just going to leave that rest. In a few minutes, I'm going to cut a few slices to show you the outcome of a lovely sugar baked mustard ham. Welcome back. Now, as you see, we have a lovely baked ham, and all the sugar is nicely crusted on it. This you can take in, serve it at your table as a baked ham on its own, or with your turkey, whatever you'd like to do. Here we have the knives for carving. You know, there's a choice of all sorts of things. In a classical kitchen, you will see this one. People have serrated edge knives in their kitchen. Uh, this is a long carving knife. This is a more modern style, slightly heavier, easier to grip. And these two are not really ham knives, they're carving knives. This is a multi-purpose carving knife with a safety grip on the handle, which takes you up from the board, where you're not going to beat your hand off the board when you're carving it, or it gives you room to get up around different items. Okay. This is the old classical ham knife. This is called a Granton. Granton is very hard to find nowadays, but that is the old classical uh, carving knife with the dimples in the blade. Very easy to keep sharp. This is what you call a, a French carving knife, which, which every professional kitchen or any modern kitchen would use as a carving knife, especially for ham. It's long enough, it's slim enough, see, not to think, and you know, absolutely sharp enough to take it. And you just use your fork. Absolutely. You know, and the secret is carving sharp knife, and then you can get all lovely pieces going into it. See the sugar running through every piece of ham? So all your guests will get a nice piece of ham with a meal and we showed you earlier, show how it's cut. Wow, this is looking good. Yeah. How's that? Not a lovely piece of ham, all nicely sugared and browned. You can serve it to anyone. Serve that with your turkey. Or serve it on its own to accompany with nice vegetables. Hope you've enjoyed your ham video, and we'll see you again for the next one.